Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk about my breech baby. It is very disappointed to know that you're 37 weeks, pretty much could go into labor at any point between obviously 37, 40, some people go to like 42 weeks pregnant, but I ain't doing that, okay? This baby got to come out at, f at least by 40 weeks. Um, but, you know, any anytime after 36 weeks um, and the doctor tells you that your baby is breech, um, there is a concern. A lot of times, some doctors will recommend setting a cesarean um a date so you can have a c-section basically they'll tell you okay your baby's breached so let's set up a date so you can have a c-section well this is my second pregnancy my first pregnancy um i had to have a cesarean it was an emergency c-section i was young um I kind of just went with the doctors, whatever the doctor told me, I pretty much, that's what I did. But with this pregnancy, you know, I wanted things to be different. You know, my first pregnancy was, it was a traumatic story, okay? I'll probably do another video, um, like a story time about my first pregnancy. Because that's really like, that was drama. But, so with this pregnancy, baby girl has been breached this whole time. Like, we found out she was breached, I think, at like 29 weeks. Um, because I would do 3D ultrasounds. Um, so, at 34 weeks, I thought, you know, well, hold on, pause. Get my thoughts together. So... We found out around between 29 and 30 weeks that um that she was breached, that she was her head was up here. So, speaking with my doula and my midwife, I started to see a chiropractor who specializes in a Webster technique. Chiropractors, um, by seeing a chiropractor, you are they help you. To help your body do do what it's supposed to. So ideally, when you see a chiropractor, um, that will help open your pelvics, and it also help baby transition um, into a, a head down position. So for a whole month, I was seeing a chiropractor um, three times a week, I'm driving all the way to Orlando, um, which is an hour away from my house. And so you can just imagine how tiring that is. So for a whole month I was doing that. And then we checked. I went to get another ultrasound. And guess what? Baby girl was still breached. So I was very disappointed because not only was I seeing a chiropractor who specializes in a, Web a Webster technique. I was also doing um, home exercises. Like, I was laying upside down. I'm going to insert a photo in here so you can see. Like, this child had me laying upside down, which is very uncomfortable, for like 10 minutes. I was laying upside down 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I was doing that twice a day. I was also doing inversions, um, which is like, I would kneel on the couch and then go head down. So, I'll probably take a few pictures insert it in this video so you can see I was doing everything to get baby girl to turn head down and do you think she turned head down just guess it's my child no she did not turn she has not turned so I've been trying to get her to turn for a very long time and needless to say baby girl has not turned so this has resulted into today's procedure today I have an appointment with a specialist to do an ECV 
external cephalic version. So basically, me and my husband and my son were going to go to the hospital in Orlando and there's a specialist who specializes in turning the baby around to a head down position externally. Here's my belly. She's here. He's going to like push her with some pressure and get her to turn down. So head right here. So I guess he's just going to do this. Um, and so with that being said, I heard it's not a lovely procedure. Um, I heard it could hurt. There are some risk factors in it. Um, depending on the baby, I can go into labor, um, either naturally or I might have a cesarean. There is a risk, um, but I'm willing to take that risk it doesn't harm the baby at all um like i said i'm doing it in the hospital so um if anything goes down i'm in the hospital so with that being said me and husband we are packed i have my like you've seen in my last video i have my hospital bag ready it's already set by the door so if if there is like a high chance that I might go into labor today so I'm hoping that the procedure goes well the ECB and that I can go home and if I do go into labor that it you know that I go into it naturally that it doesn't they don't have to say oh you have to have another cesarean because that is a possibility depending on the placenta and all of this other stuff but I heard the guy is very good um, he's done this before and has a high success rate I've YouTube this I googled this so the risks like the pros and cons the pros outweighs the cons but there's a high possibility well, not high possibility. <laughs> there is a potential that baby girl can be here today. So, today is, what's today? Sunday, March 15th. So, we'll see. Will baby girl come today? Sometime next week? I don't know. We'll just have to watch and see. Ready? Yep. For our appointment? Ready, ready, ready. Got my water. Got my blanket just in case. Got my my hospital bag. So we're doing an ECV external cephalic version to turn the baby head down. I could go into labor. So gotta make sure I'm ready. I got the stroller in the car. Go help mama carry that. Yeah. Oh, never mind. She's being superwoman. Wait, what's in that suitcase anyway? I got my camera bag. Yeah, we rooting for that baby to come on out. It's time for you to bust. Come on. We're waiting on you, girl. <laughs> I'm excited. I can't wait. Call me, okay? Oh, come see your auntie. I can't wait. This is Amelia. Yes. The soon to be auntie. I'm going to be your auntie, girl. We're going to have fun. <laughs> I'm going to give you right back to your mama, too. <laughs> Put your bag. Put your bag. 
Got to show them the car seat. And we had this put in by the fire department. So it's professionally done. And still enough room for Jay. Safety first. Keep cell phones out the way. And then just keep out. See you later. You gonna leave the headphones? Now, that was just dramatic. I'm going with her. She just wanted to do and act like she was getting everything ready. Nowhere in the world would I let her go by herself. Of course, no way in the world but let her go by herself. Good morning, guys. So today is March 16th. Um, it's the second day after, I guess, would you say it's the second day? I don't know. Well, yesterday I had the ECV, which is the external cephalic version, um, so they can flip my baby head down. Um, so today is the day after. Obviously, all went well because baby is not here. If you look down, you know, still pregnant. But I am still pregnant, but I'm very emotional because the C, the C, the ECV did not work. Um, so, one thing that they, when they are trying to turn your baby, um, to a head down position, they are monitoring her heart rate at the whole, the whole time. So, every time, the first problem was, every time they, the doctor, um, got her halfway, um, her heart rate started to drop, which just means, um, he explained this to us, that basically, um, the cord, so basically what causes the baby's heart rate to drop is that if she can get, or one possibility is that she can get entangled in her cord. So, what he was saying is every time he got her to the halfway point, basically her cord got pinch so she went right back into the same position that she was in um and as soon as she got right back into the um position that she was in her heart rate went back to normal and she was fine um so he tried to flip me one way my baby's in a frank breach position so what does that mean um basically she is butt down her um feet and head is right here so feet head on top and her butt it's deep in my pelvis which was confirmed um yesterday so he originally tried to flip her this way like kind of do like a belly flip and that did not work she liked the back flip a little bit better so when we went this way um but again when he got her to the halfway point her cord obviously was getting pinched because her heart rate dropped so and she went right back into um her frank breach position um we gave it a try um i told the doctor he said we'll try one more time um and as we did the third time, I prayed. Um, but 
the doctor was like her her butt is really inside my pelvis and that's what made it harder it was like he was trying to get her butt out of my pelvic bone but her feet is up here so it's like every time he tried to like scoop her butt out of the way to get her to flip it's like she pushed back down so she was not cooperating at all and it was very emotional I couldn't record um, I tried to have my husband sneak record but um, when we looked back at the camera I guess he never hit the button he said he hit the button but I don't know um, it just didn't record and my husband's like you know some things are meant to be and I'm kind of happy because it was so emotional like right now I'm getting emotional and I I don't even know if I want to like put this on YouTube but as a mom you um hold on I got my Starbucks you know <laughs> I was like let me get my Starbucks this morning because I need to get this all out and I know this footage is gonna be very raw and um I don't care if my emotions are out there um because I know other mothers are going through this or have experienced this and not saying that a cesarean is a bad thing you know those procedures are there because it's medically necessary but I would say most women because I'm in that category I want to feel what it is like to have a natural birth um, that's all I wanted this pregnancy my first one like I said um, was a traumatic birth and I was young, I was 16 when I had my son. And things were a lot different than, than they are. Now I'm very educated. Um, not only so much educated as far as like schooling and stuff. I'm just saying like I've really sought knowledge in this pregnancy. I've got a midwife. I got a doula. Um... I did my research, I have a birth plan, like I took all the necessary steps in this pregnancy that I didn't do with the first one because I was 16 when I got pregnant. I didn't know anything and you know I just went with the flow with the pregnancy and whatever the doctor says that was that. Um, so with this pregnancy um, I just knew I didn't want to have a cesarean and um, which is why I saw a midwife because I live in Lake County which is a part of Florida and because I've had a cesarean in the past and I live in a small county doctors here are going to do a repeated cesarean and so if I don't want a repeated cesarean I want to be back my only option is to go to Orlando which is in Orange County and again it's an hour from my house and I was fine with that um but I'm not from Orange County I wasn't familiar with the doctors and I didn't know who to go to so I had a friend shout out I'm gonna give you a shout out Katie um, she has had a home birth and I'm so glad that God put me in her life because I was like I'm not from Florida I'm from New York my son was born in Albany like where do who do I go to like I need I want to have a normal natural birth and so I reached out to her because I know she had a home birth and um, she told me about a midwife so I reached out to the midwife midwife works in, um, from her home in Orlando um, but she does a home birth and you know she can also do prenatal care well she does prenatal care you don't have to 
to see her, you can see her as your midwife for prenatal care and give birth in the hospital. Or you can see her for prenatal care and give birth at home. And so I thought, wow, that would be a great option to give birth at home. And so I talked to my husband and at first he wasn't cool with it. But after meeting my doula, so that was the second thing I did. I found my midwife a couple weeks into my pregnancy. I found a doula. Um... I met with them, I liked them, and then I got my husband on board. Because um, he wasn't on the train wagon of a home birth. But after speaking to them, after you know hearing my feelings and what I thought about everything, he was truly on board with this home birth. And so, fast forward to when we found out she was breech, again... I did what I had to do. Um, I went and saw a chiropractor, like I, I said in the first part of this video, because um, obviously this is the second day. I did that for a month. I've been doing exercises. Um, it can just be the way my uterus is set up. You know, my first baby was breached. Um, even at, even though I went to labor early with him at 34 weeks. He was still breach. So, and this one's breach. And it's disappointing because, like I said, I tried to do, this was the last resort. The ECV was the last resort. So the only thing that can happen is a miracle of God, to be honest. That she flips. And I have a feeling... Um, that she's not going to flip. That's just my reality. Um, but I did everything. So, I can say, even though I don't want a cesarean, I did all the procedures. I saw a chiropractor. I did the, um, what is it called? The inversion exercises, but they call it something else. I want to say that I want to get the name. Oh, I don't want to spill my coffee. Um, spitting babies. So I did everything that spitting babies tell you to do to flip your breech baby, which is inversion, um, laying upside down. The ball exercises, I even had the peanut ball. Um, I've done everything to get her to flip. And so it could really just be how my uterus is set up. And, you know, I probably won't know until the third baby. <laughs> if that baby's breached, then it's just probably how my uterus is set up. And it is what it is. So, um, basically... My cesarean date is set for March 30th. Um, hopefully, I got 14 days. A miracle can happen and she can turn. And if she comes head down, I'll be super happy. And honestly, according to my husband, if we get to the hospital on March 30th and they say... Um, that she is head down, we're just going to go home. I don't. We were both looking forward to having a home birth. We had our plan. We were, you know, looking forward to him catching the baby, cutting the cord, doing, um, what's that word? I don't know. I'm having, like, pregnancy brain moment here. Um, we didn't want to cut the cord right away. I can't think of the word. Um, it's not coming to my mind right now. But in the hospital, they don't... Oh, delayed delayed cord clamping. Um, if we had a home birth, I would just let the baby do its thing and not cut the cord right away. But in the hospital, the longest they delay the cord, the cord clamping, cutting the, you know, the umbilical cord, is one minute. Obviously, my baby, my husband, cannot catch the baby. 
if we have a cesarean so it's not going to be that intimacy that we was looking forward to um with this home birth so we're praying for a miracle pray for us um that way you know march 30th if she's head down then we'll be running home hoping for her to come naturally um but if not i'll have a cesarean and it is what it is um obviously i cried about it um but you know sometimes god has another plan for us so basically um i got my hospital paperwork and so i have to my cesarean is scheduled for march 30th at 10 30 um and I have to be there by 8.30. The only good thing I will say this is because I did the ECV at the hospital, I already know the procedure. So it's like literally I have to go, we're going to drive to Orlando, park on the third floor because it has the bridge into the hospital. Then go to the women's center, to the triage section. You sign in, they send you upstairs to the third floor, um, they get you all set up. I'll go into the OR, have the baby come back into the room for recovery and then they send us upstairs to the mommy and baby floor and we'll be there for 48 hours. So, you know, we're familiar with the hospital, we're familiar with the um, the process of getting admitted. So, it's when that day comes, we won't have to like stress where we're going, where the bathroom is because when I got there yesterday, I needed the bathroom. So, um, cause basically with the ECV, um, just to show you, you, you get admitted. Um, I have a little clip to show you. That you can hear her heartbeat really good now. That's her heartbeat you hear. It wasn't so loud earlier. Contraptions on my body. Daddy. -o. You know she was being monitored I'll probably post some pictures um, in this video so you can see like some of what I went through yesterday but unfortunately we couldn't really record the actual procedure of the doctor and even though I tried to get my husband to sneak record um, it didn't it didn't record and I'm okay with that because it was very emotional I cried yesterday um, and I appreciate my husband because he made me feel so much better. But now I feel bad. I feel bad because I can see that he's also disappointed. So it's like double emotion because he made me feel so much better because I was crying. At, you know, especially after the third try, I was crying, and um, because that's the reality. Like, I'm. It's a 90% chance I'm going to have a cesarean on March 30th um, unless a miracle happened. So, I could tell he was looking so much into this home birth. He was so excited. And now, because we're going to do it in hospital, they have their own rules. And our plan um, changes. And that's okay, because I wrote out a birth plan, and that's the good thing. You know, we always had a backup plan, um, hoping that we didn't have to use it. And it is what it is, so. Um, mom's out there. I know this video is kind of long, and I'm just rambling. I don't know if I'll shorten it. 
at this point. Um, but if you have to have a cesarean, um, just know that there's others, other moms out there that feel the same emotions you feel, have the same anxiety, or just... There's moms like us that want to have a natural birth and for whatever reason God has another plan for us and that's okay um, that's why we can support each other and you know it is what it is so I can I hope um, I can inspire other moms and I hope I can be a support for other moms so if you've been in this situation or you find yourself in this situation as well just comment below um follow me on my social media pages you can always dm me there or talk to me there um if you have any questions about cesareans um i had one before so this is not my first merry-go-round um also like and subscribe to my page and I'm sorry, this is a very long video, but, you know, sometimes you gotta just let all your emotions out, and I feel better now, you know. I got my Starbucks, did a little soap opera ramble with you guys, so comment below if you're in the same situation, or if you have any questions about cesareans, or even about an ECV, um... It, it did hurt. I'm going to be honest. It did hurt. But I did it for my baby. And my baby was safe the whole time. So they monitored. She was monitored. Um, so really it was just painful for me. And painful emotionally. Because it didn't work. But it does work for other people. I just have a baby that's deep in my pelvic. Her butt is anyways. So it is what it is. You guys have a great morning and ciao for now.